family. They are preparing to add a new member to their little family. Today was the day they will go to the orphanage to find their new little. George, their son, was over the moon excited. But little did he know what would soon happen. Would he learn to accept his difference and love his new brother? George. I mean, this is a day. That's right. Can't I come? You have to go to school, George. Will he be here when I get home? I think so. I'll play ball with him. I'll wrestle with him. I'll teach him how to spit. It's going to be so much fun for all of us. But how do you know if you chose the right one? I don't know. We'll... You'll just know. Bye, sweetie. Remember, I want a little brother, not a big brother, and no sister. Well, we'll keep your thoughts in mind, but remember, whatever happens, we'll all be welcoming and loving whatever, no matter what. Got it. Mr. and Mrs. Little arrived to the orphanage, eager to find their piece to their little puzzle. They are greeted by Mrs. Joy, the director of the orphanage. Hello there. It's so nice to meet you, Mrs. Joy. This is my wife, Eleanor Little. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Joy. This has been a long, tedious process. We are overwhelmed with excitement for the next step in our journey. I'm very glad to finally meet you as well. Come on in. We've been for your paperwork. It seems to be in order. Adoption isn't for everyone, but using like people with lots of love to share. So, how are you feeling? Goodness, whoa. Tingling with anticipation. Time for you to meet them. Feel free to walk around. They're used to having strangers. Oh, Frederick, look at them all. How could we possibly choose? I know, they all seem so wonderful. Do you know what's wonderful? What's wonderful is you know what the other one's gonna say before you even say it. Now that's any of my business. Yes, that's what happens when you've been together as long as we have. We're just excited to add a new addition to our loving family. For a family, you certainly come to the right place. I think we could find just what you're looking for. If you want a girl, Susan can read French. And Edith over there can talk that's all boy bubbles. Or maybe you wanted a boy. Actually, I think we're leaning towards a boy. Well, in that case, Benny can do handstands. And Andy over there can run, can run 100 yards faster than you can say, ready, set, go. You certainly seem to know a lot about everyone, don't you? That's what happens when you've been here as long as I have. You shouldn't worry about choosing. It happens the same way every time. First, you won't know what to do. You'll feel a bit scared. Then you'll meet one of them, talk to him. Somehow, you just know. Look at this little guy over here in the corner. Oh, Frederick, he's quite small. Let's go over and speak to him. Hi there, bud. What's your name? I'm Stuart. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Stuart. What are some things you like to do? I enjoy exploring. I really just want a family to call my own. It's been hard being so, you know, little. Oh, Frederick, he's just adorable. He would be a perfect fit for our family. Is this our final decision? This is our final decision. <gasps> Are you quite certain you're prepared to handle his uniqueness? Oh my, yes. His uniqueness is a perfect fit for the Little family. Mr. and Mrs. Little, we try to discourage couples from adopting children out of their own species. It rarely works out. Well, it will in this case. Mr. and Mrs. Little made their final decision, quite a big one. They'd been waiting for a long time to finally add another Little to the family. This was their dream. They couldn't wait to make Stuart feel at home and introduce him to his new brother, George. In the back of their minds, I knew it would be difficult caring for a mouse instead of a human, but they already loved Stuart nonetheless. Mom. 
and dad. We have been told you the best news of all. You have a brother. A brother? What do I call him? George. What's George? Here we are, the family hall. So would you like a tour? That's Uncle Crunson, Cousin Edgar, Grandpa Spencer. That's Aunt Beatrice, and that's George, your brother. Look, he's already happy to see me. That's just about everyone, except for... Snowbell, drop him right now. You spit Stuart out this instant, Snowbell. Spit him out right now. Me. Yeah. Stuart, are you all, are you, Stuart, are you all right? I'm fine. What? Snowbell, you must never harm Stuart. Like, you understand? Or else you'll go, Mr. Snow. Stuart is family now. We do not harm family members. This is George, George, this is Stuart, your new brother. No, really. Really, George, this is your new brother. You look somewhat like a mouse. Well, yeah, I am somewhat like a mouse. I see, I have to go. Is it just me or did he seem a little disappointed? He's always a little tired after school, pokes up around, dinner time. Meatloaf is delicious, dear. It's Cajun. Sad we get to know each other a little. George, don't you have anything when I ask to it? Sure, George, go ahead. I am an open book. Ask me anything. The first thing that pops into your head. Could you pass the gravy? <laughs> the first night excited what is ahead of him he tries talking to snowbell but he doesn't get the welcome as he expected ah my own room my own bed how amazing is this nice kitty nice kitty Pretty kitty, are you cozy? Yes, thanks. I'm quite comfortable. All I've got to sleep on is this rag in the corner, you little rats. You seem tense. Tense? I'm way past tense. Well, maybe I can help. What do you like? Can I scratch your ears? I could rub your tummy. How'd you like to rub it from the inside, mouse boy? Sorry, I'm confused. I thought that's what you do with the pet. Hey, pet. You're a mouse. You should live in a hall. This is my family. Can we share it? Read my furry pink lips. No. I can't believe this. I'm arguing with my lunch. And stay away from the windows. If the other cats find out about this, I'm ruined. I gotta relax. Where's my tinkle ball? While Stuart was in his... While Stuart was... Happy in his new home and his warm, cozy bed, he was confused why Snowball didn't accept him. But he was quickly to fall asleep. For the first time in a long time, he was warm, cozy, and content. <laughs> George, time to get up. Okay, Mom. 
You too, Stuart. Okay, Mom. George, we're trying to get the laundry started. Here you go, Mom. In the laundry! Mom! Hello! Mom! It's me, Stuart! I'm in the laundry! I'm in the laundry machine! Mom! Ah! Mom! Where are you going? Snowbell! Thank goodness you're here! Can you help me turn this thing off? Why would I turn it off? It's my favorite show. That's funny, that's funny. Snowbell, where are you going? Talk to the tail. You can't leave me here. I have to stare at traffic, yawn, lick, my, lick myself. And believe me, that could take hours if you do it right. Ciao. Somebody, please help. Amazingly, I think he's going to be all right. We'll pick out a whole new wardrobe. Come on, George, this will be fun. I don't want to go shopping with Stuart. You should, George. I wanted to talk to you about Stuart. I just want you to know that if you and he would spend some of your time together, you know, what of time, you might become close. He's a mouse! The little family heads over to their favorite uncle's home, Uncle Crenshaw. Uncle Crenshaw is elated to hear the news of the little's adoption and is looking forward to meeting his new nephew. Yes, where's my new nephew? The little family's getting bigger and bigger. Boy, that's a lot of littles. Uncle Crenshaw! That's my favorite little nephew. You can't say that anymore, Crenshaw. Now we have two favorite little nephews. Where is the lad? He has a lots of gifts to open. This is Stuart. Hello. He's uh, uh... Adorable. Adorable? Yeah, that's right. I couldn't think of the word. Look here, Stuart. Climb up on here, son. Plant your caboose right up here. He may have to grow into it. Also, I think he's grown a little since we've been here. That's what happened to me one summer. I shot him right up. May I say something? In the orphanage, we used to tell fairy tales of finding your family and having a party like this. A party with cakes and presents and all varieties of maple. A party with a big family that came from far away. Just those as well. I don't know much about families, but this must be the nicest family in the world. So I just want to thank each of you, because now I know the fairy tales are real. Fairy tales are real? I think I'm going to call for a fur ball. Now it's time for the best present of all. This is something for you and George. Stand next to Stuart. This is something that gave your father and me hours of enjoyment when we were young brothers just like you and George. This is this is this ball belonged to your great great grandfather, Jedediah Little. Remember Frederick a long summer days playing catch? George, why don't you take it outside and toss it around with your brother? Yeah, what do you say, George? You ready? Are you all nuts? How's he gonna toss a ball? How's he gonna do anything? He's not my brother. He's a mouse. Time to go. Excellent idea. Stuart felt amazing. He met his new family. He had an amazing time with them. But he felt something was missing. Who was his real family? Why did they send him to the orphanage? Something's missing. I felt an empty space inside me. What was my real family like? 
Hey Snow, I know that you and I have got off on the rough path. I just want to see if we can start off fresh. You know, clean slate. What do you say? Want to be friends? Um, no. Okay then. See you little rodent. No, let me in. I'm starving. What's in this? Oh no, mind the mouth. If she sees Stuart, it'll be all over the neighborhood. Go away. There's no food here. Please, I'm not picky as long as it ain't meatloaf. That stuff gives me gas. Something awful. Sorry, it's meatloaf. Beggars can't be choosers. Love you and light a match. No, Monty, don't. Who is that? I can explain. Are you going to run? Why? Because you're a mouse. I'm not a mouse. I'm not just a mouse, I'm also a member of this family. Oh no, a mouse with a cat hat. Cat Ha! Huh. I guess that is pretty funny. Pretty funny? Wait till the boys hear about this. Your new little master, your new little master. Hum the humiliation. Come back here. All right, no Mr. Nice Kitty. You, you can't go in there. That's George's room. Get out of there. Oh, come on out. I won't hire you. I just want to show you something. Stuart dashes into George's room for safety from Monty. Maybe this would be a good time to get to know his new brother. What are you doing here? I said I just dropped in. Did you build these? Me and my dad. This is incredible. Thank you. What's that? That's the wasp. She is beautiful. But she's not finished. You know, Stuart, I'm not sure I want a brother. How about a friend? I guess I could always use a friend. George? Yes, Dad? Have you seen Stuart? He's down here with me. What are you doing to him? He's helping me finish the wasp. That's wonderful, son. That's terrific. Can't race her like this. When's the next race? In two days. We'll be ready. How about we all go together? That's a wonderful idea. All of us together. The whole family. Welcome everyone to the 92nd Annual Central Park Boat Race. Undoubtedly, model racing most prestigious event. Children from all over New York, New York gather here every year to see whose boat will prevail, who will win and take home the magnificent trophy. And Fran and Captain's Upper West Side, the Wasp, piloted by George Little, Maybe we should go home. Why? I'm not wearing my lucky underwear. You don't have lucky underwear. Maybe we should get some and come back for another race. So listen, I know how worried you are about losing, believe me. But you know what they say, the thing that really matters is that you never stop trying, okay? Okay. That's the spirit. Everyone to your places. The race is about to start. And there's a mouse on the boat? Stuart, what are you doing? Sailing, I hope. Stuart, come back here this minute. I can't. Why not? I don't know how. Frederick, I don't like this one bit. Your mother doesn't like this. I'm okay, Mom. Go, Stuart. Tighten the mainsail. What's the mainsail? Come on, Stuart. Don't worry, George, I won't let you down. Away, the boats are sailing. Frederick, what if he falls? Remember, he's quite a fine swimmer. What is he doing? I think he's hiking out. 
Wasp is taking the lead. Stuart, that can't be good. Little high, little low. Little hey, little ho, here we go. So close, here we go. And the winners, the Wasp. After a long day of boat racing and winning, the little family settles down for the night over a hot meal. Not long after, there is a knock on the door. I'll get it. Mr. Little? Yes? Very sorry to disturb you at your lovely abode. I hope we're not intruding. I'm Reginald Stout, and this is my wife, Camille. An extreme pleasure. We're looking for Stuart. Are you friends of his? Well, not exactly. Reggie, just tell them. We're his parents. It's so good to see you again, Stuart. There's so much we have to catch up on. Why didn't you want me? It shames me to say this, Stuart, but you weren't born into a prosperous home. That's right, dear. We couldn't feed you. Couldn't feed him? How much could he eat? George, please. Letting you go was the toughest choice we ever made. It was? Yes, but now we can be family again. George, Stuart, I think we need to talk to the scouts alone. Stuart can't leave with you. He's part of the family. Exactly. You may feel like he's family, but he'll never really be family to you. You may not realize it, but I'm sure he does. There's something you'll never be able to give him because you're human. No offense. There's a place where you'll never be able to fill an empty space. It didn't take long for George to begin to love having a brother in his house. The Littles were all heartbroken to hear this news. They only wondered what was best for Stuart. Mom, Dad, you want me to leave? No, dear, we just want what's best for you. But Stuart lives here. George, come on. This is hard for all of us. This stinks. I don't understand. I thought it was a fairy tale. Fairy tales are made of stories, Stuart. This is the real world. Please come home, son. We live on our golf course. We look right over the ninth fairway. It's beautiful. Time to go, Stuart. Well, <laughs> goodbye. We love you. I love you too, Mom. I mean, Mrs. Little. Frederick, let's do something. What? Let's just make them go away. We're bigger than they are. We'll say, go, shoot. We'll scare their little whiskers off. Eleanor, you're not being rational. Rational, national. Something about this is not right. I just know it. Look at them. They just fit. So what? I have shoes that fit and I hate them. As Stuart's mother. But you're not. She is. Stuart, wait. I want you to have this. Not the road, so George. You love this car. I couldn't. I want you to. Thanks, George. I wish you didn't have to leave. I'll miss you. I'll miss you too, George. Well, here we are, Stewie. The family home. The family home. Mind you, the sisters are summer place. Winter time, we live in a cross space above a delicatessen. You like corned beef, Stewie? How's it prepared? Prepared? It drops out of a guy's mouth. We grab it and we run. Sounds like an acquired taste. Acquired taste? I love this kid. Well, time for bed, Stuart. Here's your new bedroom. We hope you like it. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. I'm serious about those bed bugs. Keep an eye open.
Well, good night. Thank you for the tip. Good morning, Mrs. Dice. It's really kind of you second us like this. You may have sleep. Actually, I had something to tell you, but first, how are things going? It's been difficult. Difficult? No, very difficult. Very difficult? Worse. Or is it very difficult? Yes, it's been almost unbearable. Just the what I was looking for. Maybe this is a good time then. You see, I came over to give some news to you. What type of news? They had an accident. Who? Stuart's parents. My goodness, where are they all right? No, they didn't make it. Oh no, oh my, what happened? Well, apparently they were grocery shopping in the canned food aisles. There was an unsteady pyramid of cans and it collapsed. It took three bad boys to dig them out. Oh, how horrible! Cream of mushroom soup, two for one sale. That's a very heavy soup. How's Bill taking it? Well, he doesn't know. You mean no one's told him? Does he have to know? Won't he wonder where they went? But they died years ago. We just found out yesterday. Years? How's that possible? They have been gone for years. Which part's confusing to you? Stupions came and took it three days ago. Three days ago? Stewart's parents died in a tragic cream mushroom soup and stood it years ago. We need to take this up with the police. Oh no, my jig's up. They know about the steps. The jig is up. What will we do? Get a hold of yourself. I'm in big, I'm in deep poopy too. Calm down, calm down. Don't get your fire in a bunch. All we need is a new plan. We do what we should have done in the first place. We scratch them out. Scratch them out? But Monty, the police are involved. I don't want to get kicked out of my house. I'm not a street cat, I'm a house cat. I don't want to lose my furry basket or my jingle ball. Buddy, pull yourself together. It's settled. Sure, little get scratched tonight. Mr. and Mrs. Little head to the police station to discuss the missing on the store and the hopes they'll get some answers. Mrs. Little, I am Detective Sherman. We understand your son is missing. Thank you for coming. Detective Sherman, what are our chances of seeing Stuart again? You want it straight? No, absolutely not. Probably Stuart's already at home waiting for you. Maybe we should get a little spladle than that. In a case like this, if they didn't call by now, they're not interested in money. What are all they interested in? Kicks? We just need a little boy back. We, we will keep you posted with any news we hear. Thank you, Detective. It's my pleasure. Back at the Stout household, the word has gotten out that the Littles are aware of their plan. They quickly get Stuart up to see what to do next. Stuart, wake up, get dressed. Why? We're taking you for a ride. Where are we going? Some friends of ours had gathered just to meet you. A gathering? What should I wear? It doesn't matter, wear anything. Is it formal? Just put something on. Why is mom crying? Mom, I'm not angry at you for putting me up for adoption. And now that I'm a scout again, I'll always be there for you. Because that's what families do. Mom, they take care of each other. Tell him the truth. Well, honey, we brought you here because we made a deal with Snowbell. We are not your real parents. You made a deal with a cat? Yes. You agreed to pose as my parents. You lied and you cheated. Yes. 
You took me away from the littles when we are all just so happy. Yes. Well, that's just wonderful. That's why I've been feeling sad. That's why I've been thinking of them. I'm not a stout. I'm a little. I'm Stuart Little. I'm Stuart Little. Stuart, please, you have to listen to us. The cats have decided you're too risky to keep around. They ordered us to hand you in. As your fake father, I order you to run. No, I'll just go home. Home? That's miles from here, and every cat in the city is looking for you. Besides, you could get lost. I can't. Every little in the world can find a little house. Bye, fake father. Bye, fake mother. Bye, fake son. Goodbye, Stuart. I'm going to miss that boy. Every little in the world can find a little house. I'm a little. I'm a little. I'm a little lost. Wait, I made it. I can't believe it. I'm home. Mom, Dad, George, it's me, Stuart. I'm back. Mom, Dad, George. Where is everybody? There's nobody else here. It's just you and me. Kid! Where'd they go? Movies, I think. Movies? Yeah. Ever since you watched it, just movies, parties, roller skating, amusement parks, they're having a the time of their lives. They are? Yeah. Yeah, I hate to tell you this, but they're celebrating. Celebrating what? Can't you guess? What? No. They were just so happy to get rid of you. That's a lie. Don't believe me. Oh, I wish I could spare you this, but it's gonna, this is going to break your little heart. Look up there! At what? He did that right after you left. Mrs. Little said, who wants to look at that little face anymore? She did? Yeah. Yeah. And George? He gave it to him. He tore it all off. He did? Yeah. I told you, Stuart. I told you this wasn't going to work out for you. I should have known. It was too good to be true. What you gonna do now? I don't know, I guess I... Leave immediately? That's a great idea! I'll tell them if you drop by, although I'll probably make them sick! Bye, Snowbell. Goodbye, buddy! This is killing me, but I'm almost done. Come on, it's getting late. Time to go home. I don't think I missed a single tree. Too bad, Grace Dog. It was a good idea, wasn't it? You bet it was. Now we all now all we gotta do is wait until somebody calls us and tells us where Stewart is. Like, if we did not find Stool, it's gonna blink his home. Not 
just the mouse. He's 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 family. Whatever. Goodbye, Snowbell. Snow, I don't really know how to thank you. Don't mention it. Ever. Mom! Oh, Stuart, we even miss you dearly. Our home was not the same without you. You're really a part of our family. You never know what you have until it's gone. Stuart, you're the little brother I've always wanted. I don't understand. How did you manage finding the house? And Snowbell. I just couldn't have done it without Snowbell. Really? What, dear? And hey, what's the matter? I was just thinking. What? That this is how people look at the end of a fairy tale. You got that right! We would like to thank Mr. Crook for his cool magic and experiences he has done with us. We'd like to thank Mr. Doshik, Mr. Shipman, and Mr. Kanzanoza for the wonderful help with the set. We would like to thank my mom, Mrs. Amar, for the amazing programs. We would like to thank my mom, Mrs. Ivari, for the amazing refreshments. We would like to thank my mom, Mrs. Sue Claris, for finding the costumes. We would like to thank Miss Miss Parsons for her loving support and acting with our play. We would like to thank Miss Donald and Mr. Wainham for the ever 
everlasting patience and the loving support during our play practice. Thank you to my mom, Mrs. Long King, for the costumes. Thank you the second grade parents for helping us throughout the play. We would like to thank Mrs. Schuler for inspiring us. Mrs. Schuler, come and join the little family. I am so proud of this second grade. Let's hear it for, what are you, the class of 2028. 20, 28. That's what I was going to say. Class of 2028. Let's hear it. Yay! What, what a talented, first of all, how cute are you? You're so cute. And all these little ears and tails and paws. Hold up your paws, kitty cats. You look great. So there's nobody cuter than the second graders. Mr. Glover used to say that when he was having a bad day up in his office, he'd say, if you ever are having a bad day, Mrs. Schuler, just go down and see the second graders because they're full of life, they're full of enthusiasm, and there's just something special about any second grade. But I think this second grade in particular is just packed with talent, packed with enthusiasm, packed with sweetness and you know I was just saying it's really hard to keep doing these shows virtually and this is our very last one so let's hear it for that I think I can say that confidently that that's it we're done with the virtual shows so it's been really fun to do this virtually to learn how it is to kind of make a movie. That's really what you've done. You, you're making a movie. And there's a lot of time on the set where we're sitting around waiting, isn't there? Yes. Yes, yes. I know. And they're tired of that. But when you get to see it all put together, as we are today and as we have today, once we show this, then you're going to really be proud of yourselves, right? And you'll never forget this show. I love Stuart Little. What a great story it is. Such a great story of what family is, of adoption, of finding your place in the world, and, and finding your family. I love Stuart Little. It's one of my favorite books. So I was thrilled when I heard that you were doing this show. So let's hear it for the people who helped us get here. And, well, go ahead. I want to say how happy we are to have Miss Parsons who's joined our staff this year and who has really been very instrumental in helping bring all the shows to the stage especially the lower school plays so let's give it up for Miss Parsons thank you all right next we want to thank of course your homeroom teachers who are working with you every single day, who love you, who guide you, who care for you in the classroom, on the playground, on the field trips, everywhere you go, and especially help you get ready for your wonderful show today, right? So let's hear it for Mr. Branham and Ms. Dawn. All right, I want to thank both of them, and I'll have to give you your treats later. Um, finally, who, one who is not with us at the moment because I believe he's teaching a class, but let's hear it for our wonderful music teacher, Mr. Locke. <laughs> Mr. Locke is the person who at this time of year probably works the hardest in the building. He's got the music program. He just came off of Sound of Music. He's got the second grade play, he's got the kindergarten play, he's got the talent show. The man is busy, which is why he's not here right now. But we want to hear it from Mr. Locke, who always guides you with so much love, so much care, getting you to sing out. I love that last song, the happy song. Um, I love seeing you sing and dance. So congratulations, second graders. You did a beautiful job. And I'm really excited that some of your parents, I hope, are going to be here on Friday and will be enjoying this together. 
So thank you everybody. Thank you for being with us today. Those of you who are with us virtually, we hope you enjoyed the show. And for our parents who are with us, let's have a little celebration. All right. Oh, wait. I said I forgot somebody. Mr. Crook. <laughs> Mr. Crook. Here's Mr. Crook, who's on his wheelies, hiding behind the camera. Hiding behind the camera, which is always forget him. Here, let's hear from Mr. Crook and his special guest. Behind the scenes. That's right. Bruno said. Bruno said the behind the scenes man, and that's right. But he adds all the special effects that make these virtual shows um, so magical, so wonderful. You're right, and I often call him the wizard. So this is the last one of these, and maybe we'll find some other way to do some virtual performances um, and, and continue to use his talents. But I have to say, it's been great. We've enjoyed doing it this way, but we're looking forward to seeing this theater packed with people again um, for the kindergarten show and all year next year. So thank you for your support of the second graders. Thank you for being with us today, and we hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thanks, everybody.